With us now is Dr. Jeffrey Epstein, and he is a neurosurgeon. Welcome to the show. How are you? Thanks, Don. It's great to be here. What made you go into neurosurgery? Um, I wanted to be a rock star, but I had no talent. Okay. So it seemed like a good alternative. <laughs> Do you play any musical instruments? I played a little guitar like 40 years ago. Okay. And then you decided to go to medical school. And through medical school, you found your practice. Yep. Neurosurgery is like one of those things where people say, oh, I'm going to grow up and I'm going to be a... Neurosurgery isn't the first thing that you, people usually say, right? It's intense. There's a lot of study that has to happen. It's exciting because there it covers so much and... I just, every surgery I do is, seems different, even though it's a lot of spine that I do, but each one seems a little different because all the patients are a little bit different. Subluxations, all types of things. People are leaking fluids. When do you know that you actually like have a spine problem? How does, how does it occur to people? Like what are some of the symptoms that you see? Well, I think everybody at some point in their life have spinal problems. Okay. Uh, you, it's very rare that somebody doesn't have back pain at some point in their life or, or neck pain. Um, it's normal because this is a normal aging process. As we get older, our spine degenerates. Uh, if you look at, unfortunately, the elderly patients, they're all hunched over walking yes. that way because their spine deteriorates. Um, and actually disc uh, problems, uh, the disc starts degenerating after age 20 or so. Really? So think about that over the ensuing, you know, seven or eight decades. Obviously, that's why people start having problems. You know, cheerleader in high school, bouncing up and down on AstroTurf, you know, childbirth, you know, been in a couple of car accidents. You know, you're right. As we live and we go through these traumatic experiences, some good, some not so good, um, it all affects our spine. And our spine is carrying all the information through our brainstem, right? You got it. So you want to have a spine that's healthy. Absolutely. Sometimes you have to do surgery. But now you've been working with um, a product that's called a stimulator, spine stimulator. Tell us about that. Yeah, the devices themselves have been out for 30, 40 years, as long okay. as I've been doing surgery. Uh, they have certainly have improved uh, them over the last uh, decade or two. Um, but simply all they are are, are wires that are placed uh, in the spine itself, and they're sending electrical signals through the spinal cord itself to the brain. And what they're doing by sending these electrical signals, they're blocking the normal pain signals that are sent to the brain. So in some ways, we are what we call modulating or, or changing or tricking the brain to feel this nice soothing sensation or a nice tingling sensation instead of the pain that's normally processed uh, in the brain. And that's what spinal cord stimulation is based on. And simply it's wires that are placed on the spinal cord attached to a, a electrical unit like a battery pack of some sort. And it's turned on and the patients either feel this nice sensation or that sometimes we can change it so they don't feel anything, but it does block the pain fibers. And that's yeah. the purpose of it. You know, um, people that have like model trains, we've done segments on model train enthusiasts before, and it's almost like that. It's like you're just switching it. So instead of going in this direction, it's going to go in this direction. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. I, can, I can visualize that. I see how that works. So when somebody comes to you and they're presenting with symptoms and you feel like this might work, what's the process? Well, every patient who comes to the office, uh, I, I do mostly spine nowadays and, and less and less brain surgery, um, but it's always my job. I feel that I should make sure that they're not a candidate for surgery or that they should have surgery because that's really the proper treatment. Okay. But for patients who either have had surgery and they still have pain or they can't have surgery because of medical conditions or they're afraid to have surgery or, or for whatever reason, spinal cord stimulation is a, a wonderful alternative because it's minimally invasive. It's always done on a trial basis. Okay. And what I mean by a trial is that very simply we take them to an operating room or an outpatient facility and through simple needles like epidural needles, which a lot of people are familiar with, with a little Novocaine, we pop a needle in. Through the needle, we steer wires up the back of the spine to a certain level, attach the wires to a little battery pack, turn it on, and the patient feels this tingling sensation. And once they feel it, we ask them, where do you feel it? Do you feel that sensation in the areas where you normally have pain? Your back, your hip, your leg, your knee, wherever it may be. And once we know that the signals are going into that area, the needles are removed, the wires taped, to the back, it's plugged into a little battery pack which they wear around their waist for a few days and they go home and they try this out. And they say, gee, does it work? Does it help? Either way, the wires come out in four or five days because again, it's only temporary. It's like a test drive. That's totally what it is. And the <laughs> nice thing about it is there, there's no cutting, there's minimal discomfort and they get to try it out ahead of time and they know, does it work? How well it works? How much they like it? 
So at the end of the day, when a patient comes back to you after, you know, after a few weeks and you're looking at them over again, um, how does that make you feel when you know that you've helped them? It, it's just, it's a, it's a good feeling because it's something very simple. Uh, I, I like it because as I, as I tell patients, in somebody who's done these a few times, in the right hands, you virtually have nothing to lose. You know, it's a very simple needle stick. The complication rate is very, very, very low for a trial. You put it in, if it doesn't work, if it does work, either way, it comes out after a few days. And then they decide. And there's so many patients, uh, when I discuss with patients, I say this, I find three groups of patients. Okay. There are those who come back and they go, eh, I'm not sure it really helped, I, I really don't want it. There are those who come back and they go, oh, don't take it out, this is better than sliced bread, it's amazing. <laughs> but the ones I find very interesting are those people who come back and they go, as we're taking the wires out, they go, man, eh, I'm not sure it really helped me. It may have decreased my pain 20 or 30 percent. I'm not sure it's really good. And then they come back a couple weeks later and they're angry. And I go, what's wrong? And they go, my pain is worse than ever. I go, really? I said, so your pain was about here. And we put the wires in and you said you were about 20 percent less. And now your pain is here, right? They go, yeah, exactly. I said, no, what it really happened is your pain was here. You don't realize how much pain reduction you have. And now that you're back to where you were, the brain perceives the pain to be even greater. And these patients do great with stimulation because they don't realize how much pain relief they had. And now that they're back to their baseline, they're miserable. Ah. And they're miserable beforehand and they're miserable afterwards. And that's why they do so well with stimulation. Understood. That makes sense to me. Dr. Epstein, thank you for joining us. Um, <laughs> I've known you for a while. Um, and you make it sound so simple, but I know that years of training and expertise are in your hands. So if someone's going to try a procedure like this, they should always make sure that they're going to someone that actually knows what they're doing. So thank you for making it sound simple, but I know that you have a lot of knowledge behind um, the expertise that you offer. So thank you very much for joining us. Donna, the pleasure's all mine. So next time people are playing with model trains, they'll be like, oh yeah, it's like Dr. Epstein's. It's like brain surgery. Fine. Yeah, it's like brain surgery. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this visit and coming up next is our dear friend, so stay tuned.